In this next section, we're going to go more in depth into the first and second generation antipsychotics and their use for managing explosive behavior. So as mentioned in the previous section, the first line treatment for explosive behavior that hasn't responded to other interventions are the second generation antipsychotics, which have the most evidence for treating explosive behavior across a number of psychiatric diagnoses. The medication with the most evidence for treating explosive behavior is risperidone, which is typically prescribed at a dose between 0.5 milligrams and 4 milligrams daily. The second generation antipsychotic with the second most evidence supporting its use in the treatment of explosive behavior is aripiprazole, which is typically used at a dose of 2 to 15 milligrams daily. When starting a second generation antipsychotic, start at the lowest dose possible and titrate as slowly as possible, increasing the dose no faster than every two days, but slower again if possible. Before deciding that a medication is ineffective, it should be tried for at least two weeks. When using second generation antipsychotics, the side effects can include weight gain, sedation, elevated cholesterol, increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Because of these risks, lab work should be obtained prior to starting the medication and at regular intervals while the patient is taking the medication. So specifically, you always want to obtain a hemoglobin A1c and a fasting lipid panel prior to starting the medication and then approximately every six months. Weight should be monitored while the patient is on the medication, again, at regular intervals of at least once every six months. In children with cardiac concerns or a family history of cardiac concerns, or in children who are on a number of other medications that can increase QT interval, you may want to obtain an ECG prior to starting the medication. And again, once the patient is stabilized on the medication, because second generation antipsychotics can also increase the QT interval. If the patient has undergone a trial of both risperidone and aripiprazole with no benefit, or if there is an adverse reaction to these medications, or if there is a contraindication to their use, it is reasonable to consider the use of other second-generation antipsychotics. However, the evidence to support the use of other antipsychotics is significantly more scarce. First-generation antipsychotics can also be considered for the treatment of explosive behavior. However, they are generally avoided due to the risk of side effects, including sedation, extrapyramidal side effects, tardive dyskinesia, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Of the first-generation antipsychotics, haloperidol has the most data supporting its use for agitation and aggression in children and adolescents, with a starting dose of 0.5 mg daily and a maximum dose that is weight-based of 0.05 to 0.075 mg per kilogram per day divided every 8 to 12 hours. The key points for this section are, number one, second-generation antipsychotics, and specifically risperidone and aripiprazole, have the most evidence supporting their use in the treatment of aggression in children and adolescents across psychiatric disorders. And number two, second-generation antipsychotics carry the risk of a number of side effects and require regular monitoring of lab values and vital signs.